you did an interview with CNBC. Yeah. And it said that now you are grossing like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars annually. We do a million now. Whoa. and welcome back to Raking It In with Rachel David or welcome to Raking It In with Rachel David if you've never been here before. This is a podcast all about how influencers make money online and today I have good friend Matt. How do you say your last name? Knemsis? I never actually had to say your last name out uh, loud. You just really butchered that. Ne uh, Kepnes. Ke Kepnes. <laughs> Um, so Matt, the reason why I wanted to present Matt to you is because he is super cool. Super cool. Uh, has awesome hair, even despite him saying that he doesn't like his hair today. And he is a really uh, big travel blogger. Now I haven't actually had Writer. a blogger. Wow. Do you not like the term blogger? No. Why? Is that like a promoter saying like I'm not a promoter, I'm like an events curator? No, because I mean I write books. I have a conference, I have, I feel blo the word blogging really implies like I have a blog, yeah. but I have way much more than that. But that, it started off as a blog. It did start off as a blog. Okay. And I think that's really what I want to, you know, th this is really a podcast for anybody who's trying to figure out like, I want to do something, I want to make content online, I just don't know how I'm going to make money off of it. Also on this podcast, I put everybody on a handy dandy lie detector. So let's start. Okay. Matt, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, so help me God. Ah! ah! I don't want to be shocked. It shocked you. Why did it shock me? <laughs> did it hurt? No, it's just like unexpected. Oh, right. But now you're all fired up. Are you ready to go? Yeah, let's ready do to this. go. <laughs> Anyways, I hope today you're going to learn a lot of things. This is a man who. You know, you quit your job and you were in a cubicle for like a couple years and yeah. and then you basically were like, I'm going to do this and then now, can I say like what you've reached? I mean, you did an interview with CNBC yeah, and it said that now you are grossing like $750,000 annually. We do a million now. Whoa, cheers to that. Yeah. <laughs> But that's with like a lot of hard work, that's with a lot of diversifying. So we're gonna get into that. So let's start at the beginning. So you're in the cubicle, you don't like your job, you're like, I'm gonna pick up and go. A lot of people probably would love to do that. Do you recommend it? Even today in this climate where, you know, social media is like very, not everyone's on social media, it's hard to cut through the clutter, do you still recommend it? Well, uh, going back a little bit, I, Worked in the healthcare for three years, mm -hmm. doing administrative stuff. I hope I can say that on your podcast. Yes. Um, and then I quit my job to go travel. It wasn't to do blogging or anything like that. Oh, okay. I just saved money and then like backpacked the world for a while. And How much did you have saved? 20 grand. Okay. Um, and then I worked over in Asia for a while. And when I came home in 2008, I wanted to keep traveling because I went back into a cubicle and it kind of still sucked. Um, so I did that and I started the blog as a way to be sort of an online resume. Mm -hmm. Just like, hey, I'm, I want to freelance write, mm -hmm. here's my work, hire me to go on stories stuff. And then, but in that time, in 2008, people were really getting into travel and blogging and so it was still like in its infancy uh so i sort of cut that wave up um and then you were like coined as one of the first travel bloggers ever yeah i mean there were like a handful of people around before me okay um i wouldn't say i was like why did they kind of coin you as that everything i read online uh a better term is one of the earliest okay. travel bloggers to say first would be <laughs> that would be like, very egotistical. Uh, it's the first one. <laughs> Never mind that guy before me. He doesn't count. <laughs> um, but to answer your question, like, should you start today? I mean, it's sort of, I always propose the restaurant scenario. There are a lot of restaurants. Should you start a restaurant? Everyone would be like, yeah, I have a great idea. Same thing. I mean... So, but if, if I look at now, um, would you still keep it a blog or would you look at maybe going and utilizing Instagram more? Because I, I hear like different things about 
blogging and obviously you're able to move your subscribers collect emails and then retarget them hi we're in new york right now p.s and it's quite loud because it's well new york, new york. <laughs> um so yeah was there do you still think that blogging is the way to go I mean, that's just my chosen medium. I don't think blo whether you're a blogger, vlogger, photographer, or, you know, Snapchat, or both well, Snapchat's stupid, so don't become one of those. Um, wow. Shots uh, fired. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, it doesn't really matter. I think what's important now is that you go, like, deeper. And, like, you know, it was very easy for me to just, like, write about budget travel when. There's only like three other travel blogs talking about it, but now like there's so many travel blogs, travel vlogs out there that you're competing with. So if you're all going after like, oh, I'm gonna like help people travel the world, well, that's great. How are you gonna get traffic? Well, I'm gonna do like helpful posts. Well, great. So did everyone else already, and they all yeah. Ran so into now, Google. well, that's the thing. Like I find like it would be really daunting and like kind of scary. Yeah, but so if you want to like. Gary Vee once said, like, who's talking about, um, you know, uh... The amount of time Gary Vee has been brought up in this podcast is pretty yeah. amazing. <laughs> you should send him all the time. Like, I know, I just, like, cut it together and be like, thank you. But, you know, I, he's like, you know, it turns out there's a lot of, like, good photographers, good vloggers, pretty people who can take pictures on Instagram. I mean, like, the world does not need another, like, person, like, over a cliff with, like, a, a hat in the breeze. Right. You know? So you're um, saying like try to do something different. Try to do something different, but like focus on like a singular topic. Like Yeah, I read that actually. You were saying how important it is if you're gonna get into anything, even if it's not travel, like just picking your niche. Yeah. You know, if instead of doing um like being a travel vlogger or whatever, like be vlog about New York City. Mm hmm Vlog about Or people in New York City. I think that is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Humans it's like even York. more more yeah. niche. It's not just New York. Humans of New York. Yeah. Uh, or pick a style like your or like all your videos are going to be like adventure tours uh, or um, you know just some something that's more specific. You know, you there's enough people in the world searching for like that topic that you can get plenty of readers, subscribers. And at the end of the day, you know. You really just want people to search and find your stuff mm -hmm. and buy whatever it is you're selling. So speaking of things that you are selling, let's go into your different revenue streams. Could you list them off really quick, like different ways that you now are able to generate revenue? Yeah, we do. We have like 12 eBooks. Uh, I have book sales through like traditional publishing that I make money through. Mm -hmm. Wait, uh, plug your book. How to Travel the World on $50 a day. Yeah. Okay. Available wherever books are sold, <laughs> especially Amazon through my affiliate link. Oh, Double so affiliate dip on that. <laughs> affiliate links. So affiliate marketing, uh, and courses. We have like uh, media courses for people, and now a conference. What's um, the conference? Travelcon. Oh my god! Yes, I did know about this, and I also heard about this hostel as well. Yes, I own a hostel, but that doesn't it make any money. It doesn't. <laughs> it's like it just revenue. Like for fun? It's funsies. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I just had a hostel for fun, like just funsies. Yeah. So you don't have enough on your plate. I somebody else does that. I'm okay. just a partner in it. Okay. And so it's not like my own thing. So you have travel con and what else? And that's it. Those are those are the things. So yeah, that's like thing. that's like a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, then I mean, you could break down ebooks into each ebook, which is but there's twelve of them, and you can break affiliates into. Uh, all the different affiliates, travel insurance, flights, hotels, and all that jazz. Um, but those would be the five big categories. What is like the biggest money maker? Travel insurance. What? Yeah. I'm so confused. How? Like, what do you, what do you mean? What's your like part in that? Well, I mean, that's an affiliate, um, but I, I sell a lot of travel insurance, so I have a good percentage. Oh. Um, but you know when someone's buy, you're getting a good percentage of a thousand dollar policy, so. So this is the travel insurance company coming to you saying let's partner, and then you just shout out the travel insurance link, right? Like simplify it for them. Um, I use a company called World Nomads in my travel insurance, and when I was. And this is an already established company. Yeah. Yeah. They've been around for like twenty years or something like that. Well, you go by Nomadic Matt, so I wasn't sure if you because they might uh, think, oh, you might have created World it. Nomad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah. Um. 
And then when I started my blog, I saw they had an affiliate program, mm -hmm. and so I just put their links up. And then I did a lot of revenue, and they re reached out to me, and I got to know the people behind the company, which is cool, because they do a lot of good work, mm -hmm. uh, especially a lot of like charity stuff. Uh, and they just gave me a really good, good. revenue split. Okay, cool. But it's not like, and this podcast is brought to you by World Nomads. It's just it's just like this is what I use if you wanted yeah. to. It, it was all organic to begin with. Like, I Cause have a good relationship with them now because you know I've had this blog for 10 years, but that's who I use. So then at this point, how much do you work? Like, is it like a lot of passive income or are you like literally working 24-7? Well, I'm a workaholic, so I kind of work 24 7. But then I go out on Wednesday nights and like sleep till 11. So, I mean, I work a lot. I probably collectively work maybe 40 hours a week, like full time job. Okay. But you know, that changes because when I go travel, I don't really like to work. So I, it goes down to like three hours a week. And then just checking emails. And then when I'm home, I make up for it. So it's variable hours. Hmm. But yeah, I like what I do, so I tend to work a lot, just because I also have a lot of things going on. But we're getting better at the team being um, their jobs and not bugging me, so I have more of a life. Mm -hmm. So, I do like to work like four, five hours a day. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. For the amount of revenue you're pulling, I think that's pretty damn good. Um, so, when I, one thing I do want to talk about is like growth strategies. Okay. If you have them or not, um, you know, a lot of people like to do collaborations. Some people do Facebook ads. Like, are there things that you strategically put in place right now to grow certain things? Well, I mean, coming from the blogging thing, guest posts, but that, that's like okay. old school collaboration. You know? Yeah. Um, guest posting on other websites is always a good way to get your name out there mm -hmm. and click throughs, especially if the website's pretty big and they have a big email list. Um, you do a lot of PR too, I noticed. I don't know how, or maybe they're just covering you, but like it seems like all the PR, when I like Google your name, there's so many things like Forbes and yeah. CNBC and it's like, so like doing a that's funneling people media too. a lot. So like, you know, if you're, if you're new, you can go to the Harrow, H-A-R-O, mm -hmm. and sign up for that. And then that, what um, that? journalists, uh, send out emails like three times a day and it's just a collection of journalists who need experts and opinions. Um, I didn't even know about this. So That's you can do that. You get on the Harrow, like if somebody is like, okay, and they'll always link to you. So that's like a way to do that. Uh, podcast. I see it was the best because it's SEO. just- you know, Search you rank, engine optimization. Yeah, do you yeah. want to explain what that is? So if you rank high in searches, but for the things people are looking for- On Google. It's unlimited traffic. Second biggest search engine in the world, YouTube. So same strategy applies, uh, which is why going deeper and more niche is better because there's less competition. You know, if, if it's something like best uh, best places to fly fish in Alaska, there's probably not as much competition versus how to travel on a budget, that kind of thing. So search is always the best. Facebook ads, but you know, you, you need to sell something. So you're not just wasting money on fruitless promotion. But if you have products to sell, yeah, Facebook. I mean, or if you want to just do lead gen for newsletters, um, uh, we do that too. But you know, 65% of my traffic comes from Google. So you do you should... pay for that too? Nope. You don't. So free organic traffic. That's wow. why Google is amazing. Wow. Oh, I thought so. for sure you were going to say that you've like paid for Google AdWords and all that we stuff. We do Google AdWords for like the courses and the products we sell, Okay. but not for just search. What do you think is the best paid advertising right now? Google AdWords. More than Facebook ads? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, Facebook converts a lot, uh, but okay. So Google AdWords for like uncompetitive terms, but Facebook is still really good. You'll get a lot more traffic from Facebook, but you have to be really highly targeted, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of junk traffic. If you were starting again from scratch, like literally today was your first day, where do you think you would put content first? I mean, if I want to still be a blogger, my blog. 
Okay. <laughs> like, uh... Yeah, I guess so. But you know how, okay. Like for example, this morning I was looking at some travel videos. Like Facebook is really good for helping get stuff out. And it's not necessarily like you would have to be on camera, but there's like, you know, pictures and stuff. And, and with the pictures, there's text on top. So it's like a different way of getting out information. Yeah. That's I not mean, writing. I mean, there's this guy, Drew Binsky, who has a big following on um, Facebook and Snapchat, but those are, you can't own that. You don't own that audience. Right? I don't want and to then say that. what happens when Facebook changes their algorithm yet again? And suddenly video is deprioritized. What what happens when Snapchat goes under it because nobody uses their platform anymore? Um, so you should always own your audience. So um, email is the best. Even on YouTube, you don't own your audience. Oh, I know. Um, you know, so like even if you want to be a YouTuber, the your call to action should also always be sign up for my email list for more information because. To follow, you know, people who are on YouTube follow you, like you for you, so they tend to be like super, like I want to follow everything Rachel does on all the channels. So follow them on an email list, and then sell them. Sh and, and then when YouTube decides, oh, we can change things around. Yeah, What's to not show all of a sudden your subscribers that you posted a video, which is a big thing happening right now, and a lot of YouTubers are upset about it. Yeah, and you know what you can do about it? Nothing. <laughs> so. That's why owning your own platform is always the best way. Because I mean, I, Facebook gets me tons of traffic. You know, I have a good following on Instagram and like swipe up stories is great. Um, Pinterest, I had like, I get like 30, 40,000 visitors a month from Pinterest. Wow. Uh, that's all well and good, but you know, those are all other sites, not my property. So. If those systems decide to change, then I'm left with nothing. How? And mm -hmm. if you look at Facebook, I mean, what's an organic reach on a good Facebook uh, page? Like ten, like ten percent, maybe. So that means like I have a quarter million people, and on a good day, twenty thousand of those fans will see it, something I post on a good day without any ads. So we can you can always bump it up oh, in ads, Facebook, yeah. right? But even then, that it's not as good as it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, oh, for sure. So like all these people don't see my stuff, and now everyone wants to move to groups uh, because you know people don't miss from group. But then you have this community you have to police, and that's more work. And why? Because Facebook tells us that way. So I mean, it's part of the game, but you should always like bring people back into your platform as much as possible. I love that. And that's partly why I wanted you in particular on this podcast. Um, because I think when I talk to some really smart, I would say business people, mm -hmm. that probably their number one thing. In this, in this reflection. <laughs> Isn't it great? Yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the things they say is go get those emails. Like get the emails, get the emails, get the emails. At the end of the day, that's all you've really got. Like, and then you're not at the mercy of any other social network, changing an algorithm and all of a sudden going under, um, you know, we even saw like with Snapchat, it's like their users, like they're losing users every day because, you know, Kylie Jenner tweets something and all of a sudden it's like their stock goes down and people, she goes, oh, like, does anyone use Snapchat anymore? And then all of a sudden like young kids are like, maybe it's not as cool as we thought, you know, like, so I think it's just fickle. Fickle, fickle. I asked some young kids if they still use Snapchat and they said yes, but only to like send friends like stuff like very casually. It's not like a business platform. You know, if you want to promote it, your products or anything, it's a terrible platform to do it. It's isolated, you get no stats. Like, no wonder why advertisers are leaving. Is it a good place to send dick pics? Yes. Is it a. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, on that note. All right, so Hand where on. were we? Hand on dick pics. Dick pics. I don't like this thing. <laughs> okay. It's gonna just sense my nervousness about being shocked. Speaking of dick pics, have you ever sent one on Snapchat before? <laughs> I wanna hear that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, but I don't wanna touch it, because then what if it says no? No! Truth. So what? I was telling the truth last time. <laughs> Your hand so... is so sweaty right now underneath. Because <laughs> I'm so nervous by that thing. Clammy. Clammy is the word. Well, All right, hand back on. No, I'm not putting it. I refuse to do this. <laughs>
<laughs> Alright, this is a very limited, shocking episode. Um, <laughs> Not gonna, this is cruel. This is violence. I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you another question, though. Just one more question. No, I don't. You can ask. I'll tell you the Just truth. Just hover. You put it on. No. See? No. That's how. I, see? I'm not the only okay, one. Okay, fine. Ask me a question. Oh, did it like break right before? Oh, no. Have you ever Ooh. sent nude pics on Snapchat? No. Dun 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 dun. Please don't. Okay, thank God. Whew! I actually haven't. This is my theory. Anything that, like, any picture you take is going, like, just be prepared for your grandma and your mom to see it. So I'm very, like, I'm a prude with that. Mm -mm. Mm. No, nothing. Don't even, like, take a picture. Because once that's encrypted in your phone, anyone could go in. That's pretty all those, scary. All those iClouds. Right? I'm, like, now in shock right now. Like, I'm like, see? I do not want to your, your hands are really clammy. <laughs> Um, right, anyways, back to dick pics. Yes. Uh, okay, back to. So, like, like yeah. owning your audience is important because th that's what you always have. So, like, if you look at YouTubers, you know, I mean, they never own their audience. Or Instagrammers, great, you have 500,000 people on Instagram. There's no friction. Like, it's super easy for me to like a photo on my way home from work, but it's a lot takes more commitment for me to open your link or open your email or, or buy a course. The people that do that, that's your real audience. So like, you care more about who, who buys your shit than who follows you. Have, as Kevin Rose said, you know, your thousand true fans. Your true fans, the people who like really love you and support you and- That's actually really smart. Donate to your Patreon or whatever. Like. I'm honestly thinking, because I mean, I do influencer marketing campaigns, that's my job, that's what I do 95% of the time. I will put my company in the link below so you can see actually like what I do day to day. Now the thing is, it would be really helpful if influencers, because a lot of like creators, they reach out and they'll email me and they'll be like, here's my, here's my followers. It would be amazing if, if you're watching right now, if you're like a creator watching, if you sent me um, a case study. Like how you could see the conversions. Yeah, what's your? But you never get that. That's just like I just feel like you would be really ahead of the curve if you could like pr like show this is what I did before and this is what you can expect. Even if they're small, because I think now, I mean, you're seeing a lot more when it does come to like brand campaigns. They're going a lot more micro with like right. a very targeted audience and very high engagement. But also, it'd be another extra thing to be like, what were the conversions on that? Micro is good or giant is good because like if you get like the. Kylie Jenner is going to sell whatever, right? Because you mm -hmm. got millions of people, right? Mm -hmm. But it's that person in the middle who is a lot harder to prove. Unless they've got a lot of clout, I think. Yeah. It's harder to prove, but I think there's also uh, a thing that it does to brands where it like um, kind of makes them feel more legit. You know, like if that person is going to put their name beside it, I'll even look at a brand different. Like there's so many brands I didn't even know about and then all of a sudden I see an influencer talking about it or putting it on Instagram and I'm like, oh, interesting, what is that? And I think yeah. it like elevates their brand. But that's why I work in what I work in. And there's also a lot of people who buy their follow their likes and they buy their followers and it's very hard to tell because they're also in like engagement pods so it looks like they're, if you look on their back end and you look at their data and you're like, oh, you know, they've got high engagement rates, they have tons of likes. The thing is, is it's like, how do you know that they're not just running it through a program? You look at all the other stuff they do. Exactly. How many Hence people, the case studies. How many people are on their email list? What's their open rate on that email list? What's your open rate on your email list? Uh, it varies. Depends if it's like just shotgun to the entire list. Which, how big is your list? Uh, 300,000. Okay. If it's like shotgun to the entire list, probably like 25%. Wow. Uh, if it's through That's crazy. The, if it's through new signups in the email, about 50. Hmm. So. Um, all right, so I'm gonna wrap this up because we've been talking for a while. I feel like you gave some good nuggets in there. It's gonna be cut down anyways. Um, but before I go, is there any last minute, like, like just some advice to leave them with? Anybody who's thinking of, you know, making content and doing this as their full-time job and, and, you know, I think we've, I mean, I've gone through that, you've gone through that. What advice do you give them? Forget influencer marketing. Oh, shut up. No, <laughs> no, actually that is really my advice. You got influence marketing and build your own products and your own platform. So no Facebook algorithm can take it away from you or change in brand marketing because 
It used to be text links, it used to be sponsored content, now it's influencer marketing. They're all well and good and you know, free trips are a great, you know, buffer as you build your own platform. Yeah. But brands change how they market. You know, suddenly blogs are up or hot. You're saying don't base your entire revenue on influencer marketing. You're not saying influencer marketing is bad. No. I hate you right now, are you serious? <laughs> how can you think influencer marketing is bad? It works. It totally works. I've I think, seen it. I think influencer marketing works when you have the right person. Well, but, thank you. But most brands don't pick the right person. Because they don't pick me to actually cast. That's very true. Uh, but, you know, don't rely on somebody else for your income. As, just like you shouldn't rely on anybody else for your audience. I like that. So, That's a very good Build your own though. platform, your own products, and then when somebody changes their affiliate rate or a brand decides to like, that the new in, in thing is some social media platform we have yet to experience and nobody does Instagram, you're like, oh damn, I'm only on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Where are all those Vine users now? Mm -hmm. Where uh. are all those Vine users now? So. Um, also, question of the day, which I was thinking, if you were sitting at home, you know, you're like, you're right there. Now think about it. If you were to just like pick up and go and you want to become a travel blogger, say that, um, what's the first place that you would book a ticket to? Very curious. Let me know in the comments below. Um, okay, also, so at the end of every single podcast, I give my guest 30 seconds to plug anything. You have the floor. Uh, you can find me at nomadicmat.com. Uh, my book, How to Travel the World on, on $50 a Day. Tagline? Cheaper, travel cheaper, better, smarter. Cheaper, so, better, smarter. Yeah. Uh, cheaper, better, smarter. And then, walk it like I talk it. Do you know that song? No. Oh, okay. I'm really terrible. Like walk it like I talk it. Walk it, walk it like I talk it. And where else? Oh, yeah. On social media. Yes. The best places. Uh, at Nomadic Matt on everything. And sign up for my email list. And I'll send you travel advice, weekly deals, and updates on how to travel cheap. And okay. all sorts of cool stuff. And then you have TravelCon too. Can anybody go to that? It's sold out, so. Next year? <laughs> Next year, you can go to TravelCon, which is a travel conference to learn how to like be amazing in the travel industry and succeed through writing, photography workshops, blogging stuff, and all sorts of cool stuff. And that will be if they sign up for your email list, they can get information about it? Yeah. Awesome. Where is it located? Uh, this year is in Austin, Texas. Is it going to be a different place all the time? Yeah. Oh my god! Killing the game! I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. No problem. Um, guys, I hope you learned something. If you did, give this video a like. And like I always say, work hard, be kind to one another, and hopefully one day you'll be raking it in. Bye. Now, listen to that, all right? 84 subscribers. That seems like not everyone I've been interviewing, it's like millions of followers. However, you have 84 subscribers and you make on average $1,000 a month from these subscribers.